Welcome to Experience the Quilt. Today we're talking about gnome beards. Hi, I'm Amy. I own a long arm quilting business to finish your quilts and also teach you about art quilting. Go to experiencethequilt.com and place your order online by entering in the size of your quilt, choose a design, thread color, or chenille yarn for couching, and we offer local drop-off or you can mail it to us here in the Boise, Idaho area. We also offer binding. We finish quilts of all sizes, even kings. There's no extra charge for batting or thread ever. Don't forget to sign up for our newsletter for 15% off your first quilt. So have you noticed the gnome craze that's going on? In the craft world especially, there's all kinds of panels and fabrics and fun things that are all gnome. Well, I'm one of those gnome enthusiasts. I am not a huge panel person, but I have found some really cute panels that have gnomes. And so I've been playing around with couching their beards and I'm gonna show you how I do it today. Okay, so first thing you need if you're gonna couch is a couching foot. Now this is a couching foot. You can get different kinds. This is with my handy quilter, so they come in different sizes, three different sizes in fact. So this is the medium size hole and this is the large size hole. I actually don't use the medium and small size hole for just about anything because I mostly use fluffy Bernat blanket or chenille yarn. This is what I do almost all of my couching with. I haven't played around, I have played around with a few smaller ones, but um, I just haven't loved, uh, haven't had a purpose for them and haven't loved how they've come out. I love chenille, it's just so cozy and fun. So I use their largest hole, which is their yellow foot. And um, you wanna use the, when you're couching, you want to use the smallest hole possible so that your yarn stays directly beneath the needle in its place. That's what the hole is for. So I have loaded now my yellow or largest hold uh, couching foot. And my thread is in, I've got a white thread to match my white yarn. You actually won't ever see the thread, so it really doesn't matter what color you use. But I have white, because I just edge to edge quilted this entire quilt first. This is my gnome panel, it's really cute. I adore it. Okay, so to load, you have your yarn, you've got your thread and your foot. I'm going to place my yarn right, oh, excuse me, I'm gonna tie off first. I'm gonna hold my top thread and wherever I wanna start, so right about here, I'm gonna bring my bottom thread up to do my tie off, like you would any other time when you're tying off. Just take a couple stitches. So now I've got my, my threads right here and I'm going to place my yarn next to that I'm gonna do a little a U and pull that thread over to the right and go down and up again. Hold on to my threads while I pull the yarn through. And that's how I get the yarn through my needle, or my through my foot, excuse me. Okay, so now that we're ready to go, I can stitch over that little end and you'll never see it. Or you can trim it, either way. But all I'm going to do is I'm gonna take away my, cut my strings away, and then I'm just gonna start quilting. I've got my yarn on the floor and I've got a lots of the yarn puddled next to me here because you don't wanna ever have any tension on where you, when you're quilting. And since you, um, so you just wanna have some, some yarn puddled right here next to you. And I'm gonna use quite a bit on this beard to make it nice and fluffy, so. It works pretty cool. Sometimes I tend, I will hang my yarn over my handle and it will make it so it doesn't um, loop up on me. I don't always do that, but sometimes it's helpful. So all I'm, oh, I've made sure I've set my stitches per inch to 15 because it seems to, uh, a, a nice tight hold really helps that yarn stay put. So I really like that. So all I'm really gonna do is just follow the lines of my beard and fill it in really close. So I'm gonna start in the middle here and work my way to the edge. And I went over. And I just literally follow the hair. It's really fun. Sometimes if it sticks out a little bit, then I'll make it stick out a little bit. And these machines are just powerhouses. So you can go over top of it a couple times if you have a hole. Well, it doesn't really matter if you have a hole, but I like to really make my beard nice and thick.
So I just move over a little bit at a time as I quilt and fill in my beard. And this is one of my straight beards. I think it's fun to give them different designs. Maybe you have a curly haired gnome. So I will show you next, once we get this one, my curly haired gnome. But I give it a little curve at the bottom. Sometimes the middle is a little fuller. So I may come down here and go a little wider and then come up and fill it in. Because they would probably have hairs not all exactly the same length, right? So you just keep filling it in. Okay, so I just did a little time lapse so I could get that beard done faster for you. But I wanted to mention that just now, as you experience this yarn, and I have a lot of experience, so I've got a lot of, I've got a lot of feel for it. I noticed as I was starting to go right here that it got stuck, like there was a little knot in the yarn. And um, way too many times I've had that not be good and break my needle and, and ruin my foot. <laughs> but I've learned to kind of, um, you, can, you can minimize those knots Number one, you can't always help it. The, the yarn just comes that way. Sometimes the yarn will even just split and break on you. And that's okay. It's not hard to restart and just cover over top of it. it it's, it's very forgiving yarn. You can cover your mistakes, which is awesome if you're worried about mistakes. Um, so one thing to, that you can do if you get a knot, if you notice, like I with, with the computerized, you won't be able to notice it except for just watch, try to watch for those knots. But um, I just happen to feel it because I'm doing the free motion. And so I stopped immediately and I kind of just um, made sure my needle was up and I just kind of pulled and I yanked that knot through that yarn. And so there's, I can feel it right here. There's a little bit of a knot there, but luckily it was small enough that it pulled through the foot. Sometimes you'll find that they won't and you'll have to just cut it and restart. Um, but luckily I felt it that time. So I wanted to show that example to you. So I'm just finishing up this beard and kind of covering up those fun loose ends maybe do a little bit of texture edges on there and then i kind of just check and see is there anywhere else i need to fill in it looks pretty good um, when you wash it it fluffs fluffs up a little bit more too and it's just so fun so now i'm going to cut my yarn right here where i finished and then i'm just going to sew over that end and just trap it in there and then I will pull my thread up, my bottom thread up and cut it. And my yarn, my, my little straight haired bearded gnome is all done. And I can see that I didn't quite catch the end at the beginning completely. So I'll just trim it up, trim up my threads and he's good to go. It's like I said, it's so forgiving. It's such a fun thing. And I just wish you could feel this. It's just, it's so much fun to feel the texture and just add some dimension to your quilt. So now on to our curly haired beard. Okay, so I've started the curly beard. I was wanting to make sure I could get warmed up before I filmed. So really all I do is do a little circle and go smaller and smaller and then I come back out. And then I come over to another spot and I just fill it in and if I'm like, oh, there's a hole there, then I fill it in. And then I come over here and I fill in this hole, come out. So really just kind of practice your circles. It doesn't, like I said, yarn is so great because it's so forgiving. So if you feel like, oh, I'm not good at something, you might want to try couching because you can hide all kinds of mistakes. And I'm just thinking like little dollops of whipped cream Look a little dollop. Sometimes I go the outside to the inside. Sometimes I go the inside to the outside. It doesn't really matter. And I don't know, I haven't played a lot with this yarn on my domestic machine. So I don't know how well it would do over the many layers of yarn. This, these long arms, they, I mean, they are just amazing when it comes to 
um, doing lots of layers. I'm doing different size curls because, you know, isn't that how curly hair is? You're going to have different size curls. And it's more fun and interesting to the eye when you have lots of different sizes. Sorry, it's harder to talk doing a video when you're doing curls than when you're doing lines. Didn't know that. Who would have guessed? So you see how I had a little bit of space between those two curls? I just went over and filled it in. Now this is going to be a wall hanging, so I don't really care how the back looks. If you're going to have it be a bed quilt, which it could be, or a quilt on the couch, or you know, to hang on the back of the couch, you might care about the back, but I find that it doesn't really matter too much. I mean, it's a little stiffer on the back, but it doesn't seem to, to matter too much. So I'm going to, right here, I have a little bit of a, that knot. So I'm just going to cut it off and it hides. And now I'm at the end. So like I said, I'm going to cut off my yarn and then I'm going to just go over the end of my yarn and I'm all done. So now I can pull my bottom thread up, trim it and there's, it's all done. I mean, is that not just adorable, a curly haired beard? I just think it's so fun. So I'm going to do my, this one straight as well. Because I don't know anything different with straight, other than straight or curly. <laughs> so there is straight and curly beards. So I hope you enjoyed learning another technique that you can use in with couching. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Please, if you did, like and subscribe and share with your friends. And don't forget to send us those quilts so we can finish them and experience your quilt.